Hi, welcome to Plugatronic. It's been a while since we've done a NAF tip, the theory into practice, so we're going to remedy that today. And today we're going to be looking at a new scale, has a kind of scary name, um, but don't worry, it's, uh, it's not as hard as it sounds, and be a great addition to your toolbox for your Native American flute playing. It's called the Hirajoshi scale. Um, it is a Japanese scale, but you'll find that you already know it. Um, you just don't know you know it. So um, before we go on, I um, want to review from the last NAP tip where we learned the uh, complete natural minor scale. So I'll show you the notes on that and just play through that one time just for review. Just a natural A minor scale. All right, so the Hirajoshi scale um, is a different pentatonic minor than your standard pentatonic minor, um, but it includes the two notes we learned last time in the natural minor scale. So the five notes are simply these, A, B, C, E, and F. So again, you already know those, so if I just play those five notes from the natural minor scale, it sounds like this. All right, um, and that's it, just in the one, one octave. Now, you can also go higher than that, so we're starting on the, the low A of the flute. It goes up to the F. Um, so we have another A, the octave A. We also have a high B, and most flutes will do a high C. So let's go ahead and look at those notes. Uh, the B, I think we learned last time. Um, yeah, I'm sure we did. Uh, so Again, the high A, B, and then C, and we'll, we'll show you how to do the C if you're not familiar with that note. Okay, so that top one um, will take some, some practice. Not all flutes will give you that high C. Um, this one hits it pretty good, and it's with um, bottom two holes open and the next three is how this flute um, hits that high C. So again, it's four finger B and I'm going to roll off to hit the C. And a lot of times if, um, if a flute won't hit that C directly, you can, you can roll into it and get it easier. And even, even if you don't, if it won't go all the way up to the fleet, uh, up to the C, maybe it's flat, um, still gives you that illusion of, of the extra note, and that can still work. Um, so let's try that, just going from B to C. You can see when I'm rolling off, it, it doesn't quite get up there, but with this flute, I can go ahead and take it off, give it a little more breath, and, and it'll, it'll hit that octave C. Okay, so with that, um, and I'll show you one other trick uh, for this scale. So, what gives this scale is kind of distinctiveness is those two um, half step intervals, so the E to the F and the the uh, the B to the C. Um, so that's what we were just doing in the upper octave, but you can go that C to B very easily by half holding the bottom note.
to get the E to the F is a little trickier because you're going from just three fingers to a cross finger. So if you try to do that, um, it's going to be hard to get it smooth. So I'll try and show you that. So E to F. So with practice, um, you can you can get it because you're you know your fingers are going in opposite directions. So that can be hard to get used to. Um, but an easier way, I'll show you this. If you start with the F, right? That's this fingering, and instead of trying to play the E with these three fingers, if you'll just drop this note down, that will usually give you a pretty good E note. And you might have to adjust your breath pressure if it's flatter or sharper on your flute. But what that lets you do is very easy um, F to E. And let's compare this E to that one. You can see it's spot on, same note. So just a different fingering. Um, so with those tricks in mind, that gives you a lot of flexibility. Even though you got five notes, you've got an, basically an octave and a, and a half almost. Um, and that little trick lets you do the, the F to E thing. So, yeah, go to it. You can even play the mode 4A if you're familiar with that. We haven't talked about mode 4, but um, uh, that's another option there if you're on the F, is that instead of trying to switch to your typical A, um, just use that finger. And again, you may have to adjust your, your breath pressure to, um, to get it in tune. So, um, yeah, so that's pretty much the lesson. Uh, again, that just gives you a different tool in your toolbox. And we'll, we'll, uh, we'll play out with the uh, backing track that we used last time. And we'll use the same backing track. Now, what's neat about this is that track was the, the chords were A minor, D minor, G and E minor. And some of the chord tones, you know, the notes in those chords are not in your scale, right? So D minor, there's no D in the scale. Um, G major, there's no G or D in the scale. Um, but it's pretty cool. Uh, it's still, the, the, if you play the that scale over those chords, it still works. Um, so that will, you know, just spice up your playing, give you a little bit different sound uh, than, say, your pentatonic or even the natural minor. Um, so let's give that a go. Um, we'll play that out, and then I'll give you a link to, to that backing track, and uh, you can use that for your own practice. So let's give it a go.
All right, so there you go. Uh, have fun. Uh, let me know what you think of it. Uh, you record yourself playing some Hirajoshi music. Love to hear it. Uh, thanks for watching.